I'm with Jeff Benjamin, who is the general counsel for Avon. Uh, he is someone who hasn't been at Avon for very long, but came to Avon in September. Um, he is both the general counsel as well as, well as the chief ethics and compliance officer. Uh, he came to Avon out of retirement. They, they dragged him away from <laughs> enjoying his time up at uh, Cape Cod. He had spent 37 years before that at Novartis. Uh, his last role at Novartis, which he held between 1997 and 2010, was as the Chief Ethics and Compliance Officer. Uh, what we're going to do here today is talk about a couple of issues uh, that Jeff's very familiar with, and uh, then we will open the floor up to questions. Um, contrary to what I promised you, this is on the record because this is Dow Jones. <laughs> Sorry about that, Jeff. Yeah, it's all right. Uh, but you know, the, the role you're playing and the company you're working for is one that is of great interest to everyone here. Uh, as most people probably know, Avon has spent over five years conducting a fairly extensive internal investigation into whether its employees had paid bribes overseas. It's been a pretty costly undertaking. Uh, according to Avon's most recent uh, regulatory filing on this issue, it has spent more than $300 million just on legal expenses and related costs. And that's even before the federal government tells them how much they owe for whatever rules or laws that they broke. And in their latest 10K, Avon said that the federal government's own investigation of these possible bribes is going to likely cause a loss for the company that could be material. So I wonder for starters, uh, Jeff, if you could talk about your prior incarnation at Novartis and, and describe some of the biggest compliance challenges you faced before joining Avon and how you dealt with them, and to what extent that prepared you for your current role. Um, I'm delighted, and I, and I assume, by the way, even when I'm in a shower, I'm on the record, which I think is, <laughs> is it, it's good advice for anyone in the field of ethics and compliance. So, um, uh, I think at, at Novartis, uh, we had, uh, the opportunity to experience most of the challenges that are universal to ethics and compliance programs. Uh, we were fortunate, in a sense, to be in a, uh, an industry that had to develop some sophistication uh, even long before I joined in 1974 because of the uh, regulatory um, uh, and litigious environment in which uh, pharmaceuticals, healthcare, uh, specialty chemical companies um, uh, you know, have to engage. Um, but one common challenge I think we experienced, which uh, really proved to be most daunting, um, was creating a, the, the kind of open speak up culture um, uh, that I think is one of the best prophy prophylactics against uh, uh, violations uh, and, and uh, stumbling block to achieving a kind of a culture of um, uh, ethics and, and integrity that one wants to establish and sustain. Um, and, you know, anecdotally, uh, we had that experience. I know Michael Shore is, is in, the, in the audience. Uh, he was with us, uh, you know, during a period of time. I think in the early to mid 2000s. Uh, when we found that that sense that we had that people weren't coming forward whether to disagree with conventional wisdom in the company uh, or to raise ethical concerns or report violations was confirmed by data we were collecting in standalone ethics and compliance surveys when we would ask the question uh, did you witness a code of conduct violation or a legal violation in the last 12 months and then if the answer were yes, there'd be some follow-up questions, including, did you report it? Uh, and we were seeing numbers 
35 to 40 percent, which might have even been lower than the mid 40s. To in, which? Yes, they saw it or yes, they reported it? Yes, they reported it. Nah. Yeah, no, no, no. Not that many saw, but you know, that was a number that might have varied between, I don't know, 8 and 15 percent, depending upon the year. Um, but a very small percentage of people who were witnessing failed to report. And, and I think as surveys universally um, uh, reflect that major reasons people don't report, peer pressure, fear of retaliation, um, lack of confidence that uh, reports will be um, treated seriously. Um, and, and so we reached a point, you know, where, I mean, I, I believe one of the four major characteristics that differentiate an elite ethics and compliance program from a merely effective one is continuous improvement. And we were trying everything. And um, uh, finally, we, we reached a point where um, in one of my reports to the board of directors, um, uh, we identified this as the most significant deficiency in our program, asked for the board's support. And we developed a, a, an action program which really sought to build upon a second characteristic that I think is important uh, in differentiating the elite from the effective. Uh, it's a, a holistic approach. Um, and that approach uh, involved um, uh, involving um, uh, our employees in, in dealing with the issue, uh, collecting their suggestions, having focus group exercises, providing them with the survey feedback, um, uh, then uh, we retained a, a consultant um, uh, who helped us understand that even the best intention managers uh, will often um, uh, unwittingly discourage people from coming forward and raising concerns. And we, we train managers at every level in, in how to be encouraging, welcoming um, when associates came in you know, either with different out-of-the-box ideas, uh, ethical concerns, reports of violations. Um, we, uh, uh, we acted out and vid videotaped, um, you know, a, num a number of situations, uh, you know, the wrong way to deal, uh, you know, with, with such an initiative. Uh, uh, and then we did our uh, active uh, engagement during, during training and and, and try to teach the right way, and then we would show the right way. Um, I mean, the very fact that we made the commitment, I think, um, uh, helped us uh, turn things around. And so we had a breakthrough year that year. We went from, you know, mid-30s, you know, up to low 50s. And then the following year, in, you know, in the, in the mid-60s, uh, people who said they reported violations. How uh, much of this kind of approach was in place already when you got to Avon, and how much further are you trying to take what Avon's doing? Yeah, so as you said, I've been at Avon for, um, uh, for six months, and, and so we're doing our first standalone ethics and compliance survey. We've actually just com completed conducting the survey. We'll be getting the results you know, in, uh, you know, in several weeks. And, and, and again, we have questions like that to elicit this type of information. Um, even within companies and institutions, as I'm sure everyone here has experienced, cultures vary from pocket to pocket. Uh, one of the um, pervasive senses I ha I've had since joining Avon is that uh, we have um, associates who are very passionately loyal uh, uh, to the company um, uh, and proud of its um, commitment to social responsibility. Um, and, and, you know, and for that reason, my sense is maybe may more upset by an investigation, you know, than uh, people might typically be upset because it has so much become a fact of life. Um, you know, and so I have a sense that people do, do speak rather freely, and we have a CEO who very much uh, encourages that. She models that um, uh, in, in Sherry McCoy. Um, Which is another element to an elite compliance program, right? 
Modeling uh, by the CEO. Mod modeling, not, yeah, not only by the CEO, but I, I think uh, I think tone in the middle is is as important as, as tone, tone at the top, uh, or almost almost so. But yes, uh, Sherry, uh, you know, in the, my my very first conversation struck me by her candor and integrity as well as her broad uh, uh, business acumen and, and experience, and she's just very down to earth, uh, uh, very accessible. Uh, I think she, uh, corporate security probably has fits, you know, because she's you know, she's constantly walking out in the crowd and eliciting feedback from people. Um, but still, too early for me to uh, answer your question w within high confidence limits as to the extent to which right. people uh, are, are comfortable really coming forward and raising concerns. Well, you'll find that out when you see <laughs> the results, obviously, of the yes. survey. That Is that help. company wide or just U.S. No, it's company-wide, and um, we sent it to uh, everyone with access online, and uh, I heard just the other day, it's the first time we've done it at Avon, uh, we had a 60% response rate. It was out that's there for two good. weeks, so that is, that's encouraging. Um, you know, and, ha and has, so obviously, sending out a survey it, 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 it is a multifaceted communication. You're getting feedback. You're also letting people know this is important to us. We really want to hear what you have to say.